Because there were some things that the Lord wanted him to understand about the kingdom of God. And I noticed that he was not interested in the things. This is somebody that has been born. You know, it's very painful to be born in the church and not really know God. No, not know the reality of the kingdom of God. And I noticed that for many believers, just like him, he didn't even know how shallow he was spiritually. Because one of the signs that you are really, really shallow is that you will not even know that you are shallow. As you begin to intermeddle, as you begin to deal with knowledge and understanding, you will now realize that now that you know much more than you knew before, you realize that you, didn't even, you don't even know anything as much as you ought to know. I, do you understand what I'm saying? It's just like when you see some children, when they finish, they know general mathematics in primary school. They feel that they know book very well. But by the time they start doing real math in the university, <laughs> they will realize that they did not know anything. And there are many times that God wants to reveal. And you see, one of the prayers and the desires that I have for this ministry, the stream Globe World Encounter particularly, is that anyone that is consistently part of this ministry will be such that knowing him, you will, there will be an entrance of spiritual understanding in your life. Because you are dealing with a person that is filled with the knowledge of God's will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding. Amen. So, so that we do this, I'm going to announce another thing. I was watching um, my sermon, some of the sermons that we had, last week's sermon, and I realized something. I realized that many times when I'm preaching, I talk really fast. You notice that I'm particularly talking a little slower today. And it's like my brain works, watch, works much, much faster than my tongue. And there are some things that we start and I will not finish saying it. So for those of you that are listening to me, very, you know what I'm saying. So I want, to, I want to be very particular about... Now, one of the reasons why I talk so fast is because there is so much to say and there is so little time. But you know what we are going to do with the help of God? I pray I don't forget. But can I get a pen? Let me write something just briefly. I want to start teaching a little bit more slowly so that there can be better understanding. Amen. Let me just say this about the kingdom life. The Bible says that this is our Lord Jesus actually speaking. Apostle Paul was the one quoting him. Now, we don't have any record of that in the Gospels. But as Apostle Paul said, as the Lord said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. Now, I said this because there are many things that Jesus taught that the apostles, even Paul, knew that were not recorded in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And when you begin to read the episodes, you begin to see them regurgitated. You begin to see them reiterated. So when Apostle Paul said in Colossians that let the words of Christ dwell in you richly. When you listen to teachings like this, because basically what we are doing is that we are teaching the words of Christ. Anybody that is teaching under the unction of the Holy Spirit will be teaching the words of Christ. When you read the episodes, you see that basically what they were doing there was that they were explaining the teachings of Christ. Many of them, you can actually see them in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Jesus actually took time to teach his disciples a lot of things. If you read the Sermon on the Mount, is a very good example. So, when a person comes in contact with you, it shouldn't be so much about what you can get from them. I, I, I'm, I'm talking about the kingdom way. You know, in the world, people make friends because of what they can get. In the kingdom of God, people make friends because of what they can give. Because our Lord said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. And as you make your decisions and plan your life now as a kingdom person, let that form the framework of your planning. Don't be more, you know most people are looking for where they can get something out of. Bro, Yemi knows that I'm making some very serious plans about some things. 
most people that hear about that plan, they say, ah, he wants to go and enjoy. He wants to go and take something. You know what, you know, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> that is not true. The only reason why I'm making that decision is because I know that God wants me to go and give. Why are we having this meeting here? Are you understanding? So when you come for a meeting like this as a kingdom, I'm talking about how to walk in the blessing. You see, the blessing is such that the devil cannot curse you when you are walking in the blessing. The devil cannot slow down the seasons of your life when you are walking in the blessing. The blessing is such that you will be operating in the frequency of heaven and from the resources of heaven. Are you... Hmm. Amen. And one of the ways to plug into the frequency of the blessing is that you must understand that now that as a kingdom person, it is more blessed to give than to receive. If I'm in a relationship with you and I am always at the receiving end, I won't be happy. Most of the time, I will want to be the one giving more than I am receiving. Even if I am dealing with somebody that has much more money than me. Because the Bible says, if every Christian lives like that, you will discover that it will be very easy for us to live in peace and harmony and love and oneness as believers. Because everybody is not seeking their own. They are not seeking what they can get. They are seeking what they can give. If every marriage is like that, most problems you have in marriage will not be there. Because if your husband, his own is not, you know, most, let me tell you the truth. Thank God that we are all males here. You know, most many young men that want to marry, the reason why they want to marry is because they are looking for a house girl that they will be sleeping with and that will be giving birth to children for them. You know what I mean? You know why you know I say house girl? They are clothes, they don't wash, they, they, they are looking for a woman that will be washing their clothes. That will be cooking for them because they don't know how to cook. So when they sit there and say, ah, I need to get married, I need to get married, it's just a number of I need to marry somebody that will fix all of these needs in my life. And of course, they are looking for someone that they will be having intercourse with, which is a natural need that people have. That is all they are looking for. And that's why many marriages are broken. And by broken, I don't mean that they have divorced. Many mar- people that have not divorced themselves legally and physically are, have already divorced themselves psychologically. It's a very sad thing. But as you get into marriage, amen, please remember this principle that it is more blessed to give. Let the person that you married be better off because she married you. Let that be your goal. What am I contributing to this person's life? It's not about what is this person coming to fix in my life. Because if you are thinking about all that she can do, first and foremost, you are marrying a woman that most times you marry a woman that has a job. She will not be able to satisfy all of those your needs. Some people will say, I want to marry because I can't manage my finances. Now, when I marry my wife, she will be helping me to manage my finances. You understand what I'm saying? I can't marry, I, can't, I cannot, my house is very rough. You know what, you know, we guys, by physiology, it's a, it's a psychological thing. We are normally, we are more competitive than women. Well, women are naturally, not in all cases, but, you know, are really more orderly than men. So it's easy for you to enter a man's bedroom eh? and you see you, 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 you may see the trouser that he wore last on the ground. That's absurd. But it's possible. You understand what I'm saying? You see everything is so scattered and all of that. But it's, it's, it's usually strange to see that in a woman's bedroom. But you know what? So if a man marries, and that's the only reason why he married. He married so that when he marries his wife, she will bring order to his life. And he now discovered that she, he is more orderly than her. What will happen? Do you, know, do you know a sense of disappointment will plague that marriage for a long time? So when you are going into any relationship and into any venture and into any setting, the Bible says it is more blessed to give than to receive. I'm not saying you shouldn't have expectations. Naturally, we have expectations. You came here because you wanted to be blessed. But what I'm saying is that even as you came here in order for you to be blessed, think about what you can also do to add to the work. Amen? Amen. May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. Mm. 
Introduction is long today. We started last week on the topic of spiritual enlightenment. Spiritual enlightenment. And we didn't... I think we did about 10% of the whole teaching on spiritual enlightenment. And I said that we will continue today. Unfortunately, some of our brethren that were here last week are not here today. And there was a question that I think it was brought Ayo that asked about um, the second coming of the Lord Jesus and all of that. But we are not going to touch on that since it's not around. We may touch on that if the Holy Spirit leads us that way. But we already have an outline and a plan that we are going to go on today. And I pray that the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Lord, as I teach, I ask that you open my mouth. You help me to speak with utterance and to speak as I ought to speak. That every hearer will understand. And as a result, we'll be more established in your word, in your truth, in your reality, and in your righteousness. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. All right. So, spiritual enlightenment is our topic. We started last week. We saw that um, it is possible for you to be a believer. In fact, the fact that you have believed in Jesus does not mean you automatically become enlightened. Enlightenment comes as a result of learning and understanding of the mysteries of the kingdom of God. Because God's kingdom is powerful and very great and it is not of this world. It is full of mysteries. Amen? Amen. If the kingdom of God were not full of mysteries... The devil would have been appropriating the power and the glory of God's kingdom. But he cannot. The only people that can appropriate... The, oh, you know that the devil has his own kingdom. And there is the power that is in his own kingdom. It is nothing close to the power in the kingdom of God. Nothing close. In fact, it is almost an insult to compare them. How dare you compare the creator with the created? I hope you know that when the devil fell, when the devil fell, people say the devil wanted to overthrow God. Eh? Many of you believe that. It's not, that's not the truth of the word of God. Though. The devil said, I will exalt my stars above the stars of God. That's what people heard. And I will be like or as the most high. He didn't say I will be greater than the most high. Let me explain something to you. There are different spheres of existence and God is in all of them. This realm of existence that we are in, in the, the Bible says in the beginning, where was God when he created the heavens and the earth? Are you understanding my point? Because we say heaven is a throne, eh? Where was he when he created the heavens and the earth? You see, I think we looked at that study when we saw that in Colossians, he talked about how Jesus Christ is the firstborn of God's creation and by him were all things made and for him. So when God wanted to create this realm of heaven and earth, the spirit realm and the physical realm, this realm of existence, are you following me? The first that God created was that, that no, that's not, the word is not create. The first that God brought into this realm was the word. That word is pre-incarnate Jesus. What is pre-incarnate Jesus? That's Jesus Christ before he became flesh. The world was made by him and for him. I hope you know that Jesus existed before he came 2,000 years ago through uh, Mary and was born into the family of Joseph in Bethlehem of Judea as a descendant of David. Now what I am saying is that everything that exists I showed us in... Okay, let's just read that Colossians chapter 1. If you're in Colossians chapter 1, let's read verse 9. No, is it verse 9? To, let's read verse 7, 7. Colossians chapter 1. You know, I'm still trying to get used to this Bible. This Bible I'm using now. I'm, I seriously, seriously need to get back to my all right okay are you in verse 7 as you learned of Epaphras our dear fellow servant who is for you a faithful minister of Christ I said last week that Epaphras was the one that took the gospel to the Christians in Colossae now let's go to verse 17 talking about Jesus okay um, 
Let's start from verse 15. Now, listen carefully. It says, who is talking about Jesus is the image, amen, of the invisible God. You see, God cannot be perceived in this realm of existence except through Jesus. So Jesus Christ said, no one has seen the Father except the Son that reveals him. So he is the image of the invisible God. The firstborn of every creature. A better, a rendering I prefer is the one that says the first over all of creation. The firstborn. So before everything was created, he came first. And the Bible says, by him were all things made and for him. You see, I'm going somewhere with all of this because I'm trying to, exp see, I was praying this morning, yesterday and this morning, I was like, Lord, what do you want us to? Because I want anybody that follows this series to understand the kingdom of God. Why did God create us? Why did God, Jesus, have to come and die for us? Why did God have to redeem us? Amen? Amen. So we see here that Jesus, the pre-incarnate word of God, is the first over all creation. For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible. Whether they be thrones, you know, we've done that before, or principalities, or powers. Thrones or dominion or principalities or powers. All things we are created by him and for him. So, when God wanted to create the, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. How did God actually do that? Jesus Christ was brought forth into this realm. This realm does not just include this physical realm, this physical world. This physical world, the back end, you, are, you know what back end means? The back end of this physical world is the spiritual, spirit realm. And that was when all of these things were created. Both this physical world and the spirit. That's why I say both thrones, dominion, visible or invisible. All of them were created by who? Jesus. They were created by Jesus. Including the devil. Are you understanding? And when he created all of those things, you know what? You can just put your phone on silence or do not disturb. Because it's not just disturbing you, it's disturbing me. Amen? Amen. When he created all of these things, he also created thrones and created dominions. He created principalities and powers. We've done that before. Thrones, dominions, principalities, and powers. Now, what the devil was trying to do was that, you know, within the sphere of created things, what God did was that Jesus Christ was the ruler of all things, you know, in heaven. God was ruling over heaven, administering his authority over the heavens through his thrones. Now, these are very complex things, so I'm not going to dwell on it so much because that's not our main study. We're just talking about enlightenment. Now, you will now discover that there was actually a vacancy because for some reason, God created all of these things and you notice that it took a very long time before God created man. Because God's, I don't, I don't know, God is in his wisdom knew exactly what he was doing. So, you can imagine that for maybe billions of years, God had created people to occupy dominions. Sorry, there was, we you know we saw thrones and dominions, principalities and powers. All of those angels, including Lucifer, these were principalities and powers. And yet, 
there was a higher realm and there was nobody to occupy it. And you know that God, are you understanding my point? God is not, is not created. He's the creator. So, it, even though God was the one that was ruling over creation, there was no tangible ruler over creation. The way that Lucifer, for example, was a tangible ruler over the sphere of influence that God gave him as a prince. You know, principality and prince. You understand what I'm saying? A principality is a prince over a territory. But when you have a throne, it is higher. Are you understanding my point? Than that of a principal. So, for example, Jesus Christ said that they that overcome, they will sit, I will give them thrones. Another place, they that overcome, I will give them the crown, which is, which is life itself. Or the crown of life. Let me explain to you what that does. When, by the time God has given man thrones, we will be able to operate like God in this sphere of existence. That is the reason why, even though Adam did not have the ability to create, God gave Adam the privilege to name. And the Bible says it is whatever name he called them that they wear. What that means is that it was Adam that pro programmed the characteristic of the animals that you know. It was you and it, do you understand what I'm saying? Now, principalities don't even have that kind of power and influence. I was listening to a sermon the other they don't have that kind of power and influence to the devil cannot create anything. It has not been given to him. That's why if you see anybody that is very talented and that is using it to worship to maybe a singing talent, it wasn't the devil that gave him that talent. It was God that gave him that ability to sing. The devil did not create anybody. For thou has created all things and for that everything that is created is, a pro is God that did it. And you discover that human beings have a lot of creative power. We have a lot of creative power. And our creative power becomes brighter when you find a civilization of people that are synchronized with God or aligned with God more. So you discover that, for example, the creative power of humankind for the past 2,000 years skyrocketed. I mean, this is just scientific data. Right now, I am streaming, the, I am streaming to you. I can have a video call. Do you know that 30 years ago, we used to think about video call. Now, 30 years ago, some of us were here, were not born. Some of us that were born were babies. But just 15 years ago, 20 years ago, the idea of video call was unbelievable. That, ah, you mean you'll be talking and you'll be seeing the person you are talking to. But creative abilities, creative abilities, we are there now. Amen? So you find that thrones and dominion. What Adam had, are you with me? Before he fell was dominion. He had not yet occupied thrones because he had not yet gotten to that point. God knew. Do you understand what I'm saying? God knew. I, God knew that Adam was going to fall. So what God told him is that have dominion. But Satan saw that in this fear of existence, and remember I said that this fear of existence is not just this physical realm. It's the spirit realm included. The spirit realm and the physical realm are together. The spirit realm is the back end of this physical realm. Anything that you see existing in this physical realm can be controlled from the spirit realm. Are you understanding my point? Not just human beings, even animals, even matter. That's why you can pray and rain will stop falling. How did you control it? You controlled it from the spirit realm. I, I, amen. amen. Now, there was no throne. So it was God that was occupying that. But the devil saw that there was space for a tangible. What I mean tangible. Because the Bible says Jesus is the, invis is the, is the invisible. How did he put it? Uh, image of God. He's, this is the image of the invisible God. So many times, whenever God wants to visit. Now let me just explain. This is the way I understand that. Whenever God wanted to present himself into this realm, he came through Jesus. 
reincarnate Jesus. Do you understand what I'm saying? Any time that God already presents himself into this realm, he came through you. But remember that God dwells in the heavens of the heavens. That is in his own realm. So the devil, so when the devil said, I will exalt my stars above the stars of God, what was he trying to do? Exactly. The angels are actually ref- also referred to as stars. You can do your study in the Bible. So he wanted to rise above the angels. He wanted to, he was an angel, but he wanted to be superior to, the, he, he, he wanted to now occupy a throne. He said, I, he, he now wanted to put his, do you understand my, my point? And God, and that was rebellion, because that was not, he didn't keep his estate. He transgressed his estate. So now, in, with all of this I have explained, have you, have you now been able to see how ridiculous it is to say that the devil was trying to overthrow God? <laughs> because what the devil was trying to do was that it's just like you create a video game and you put characters inside the video game and you yourself that created the video game you have a, you know, of course because you are the creator of the video game, you have a character in the video game, for example if you, if you have a website now, in order for you to control the website, you'll be at the administrator of the website and then there come other, other users and then one of the users inside the video game now wants to overthrow you inside the video game, does it mean he's overthrowing you? Are you now understanding? Uh-huh. So God, so it took many, many years, probably billions of years. Scientists say that the earth is how many billion years old? I sincerely believe that. People say, no, but and Genesis, they've done their calculations about that the earth is about 6,000 years. I say, why don't you use your head as a Christian? Being a Christian doesn't mean you don't use your head. Because the Bible says in Genesis chapter 1 verse 1 that in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Full stop. And the earth was formless and void. Sure, you know that God will not create the heavens and the earth and, and the earth will be formless and void. A lot of things happened between Genesis chapter 1 verse 1 and Genesis chapter 1 verse 2. But I'm not going to dwell on Genesis. I try not to dwell on Genesis. Because I remember that many years ago the Lord instructed me to avoid teaching too much on Genesis. I don't know whether that instruction that embargo has been lifted fully. But I know it has been lifted partially. But because of that, I try not to dwell too much on Genesis. Genesis. Because if you dwell, by the time you begin to dwell too much on Genesis, it will become endless genealogy. You understand what I'm saying? Endless genealogy. Because you, if you enter that place, you won't come out of it. You'll just be doing, okay, especially if you are someone that likes a lot of knowledge. Endless genealogy. The, the universe has genealogy. It has origin. And we can study it, but it is not, that's not what we have been called to study. When you dwell too much on the origin of the universe, origin of demons, origin of this, it's called endless genealogy. May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. Now, after many, 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 many years, there was a rebellion in order, God now, dis- if you read is it Ezekiel, you will see that there was a lot of talk about Lucifer and how that Lucifer was in the Garden of Eden before there was, you now realize that there was an organized creation and there were creatures on the earth even before God created man. But God destroyed everything and God destroyed it by water. And that's why by the time we now saw in Genesis, the Bible says the earth was formless and void and darkness was over the face of the whole of the earth was covered in water. Because when that rebellion happened, God destroyed the devil's sphere of existence. So if you read from that Ezekiel, you discover that the devil, Lucifer actually had influence over the earth. The earth was, so to say, his territory. Are you understanding what I'm saying? But he was not the, he didn't have a throne. He was a principality. That means he was a prince. That's why even still t- t- till today, in the recreated earth, he managed his way to become the prince of this world. And um, so, after many, many years, that rebellion happened, because basically what that rebellion happened it was that it helped God to screen. Because what God did was that when he gives people free will, he allows them to demonstrate that they want him and they love him. And those are the people that will go into his, the fullness of his plan. So basically what he did with the angels, because you know, God created the heavens and the earth. Angels are angelic beings. So he first of all did it with, with the angels. He, screened, he allowed there to be a screening. You think he didn't know that Lucifer would do what he would do? 
And the screening was that a third of the angels chose whatever Lucifer was offering them and they fell. The remaining two third of the angels that did not fall, you understand what I'm saying, are qualified to enter into the next phase of God's agenda for creation. You understand? So that screening was done and dusted. Successful. God has taken two records of the angels that blasphemed. I hope you know that those angels have not yet been punished though. There are some angels that have already been punished because those angels did extra. If you read Jude, it talks about the angels that didn't keep their estate, that have been kept in everlasting chains. Those were the angels that the Bible says Jesus Christ went to the proclaim to in Peter, first Peter. Because Jesus Christ, when he didn't go and preach to them as in accept Jesus, he went to show them that. Because the reason why those angels did what they did and they were defiling human race was because they didn't want the agenda of God to be fulfilled. Because by the time God created man and the angels saw those, are you understanding my point? Those principalities and power saw that man was created in the image of God and in the likeness of God and they saw the way God was just playing with man and talking with man. They knew instantly that that throne that they were fighting for eh, the people, because the reason why they were fighting for that throne was because they sensed that vacancy. So they, now, they knew instantly that that throne that they were fighting for, ah, the real owners have come. And so they now sat down and said, what are we going to do to ensure that these people do not get to that throne? And so the devil now started. The devil is a very good uh, negotiator and a very good marketer and very good at deceiving. He noticed that the woman was younger than the man. And that means it was going to be easier to deceive the woman than the man. Of course, you know the woman was younger than the man. By the time the Adam was, you know, God was giving Adam to have dominion and all of that. You know, in fact, Adam was naming the animals. The woman was not, she didn't have, she, didn't, she hadn't attained that level of depth as it were, to name the animals. Because it was when he named the animals that he now saw her and said, this is bone of my mother. He used that same principle and named her. You know, he was Adam that named her. He said, woman shall you be? He was the one that gave her a programming. Do you understand what I'm saying? That's another, that's the kind of authority that Adam had. The Bible says, and God brought all the animals and whatever, and then he now said, this is woman. First of all, first of all, did that naming, and there was no helper that was suitable for him. God now created a help. <laughs> Genesis. Anyway, God will help us in Jesus' name. <laughs> now, you know, now you will notice that in Genesis it says that the serpent. It didn't say a serpent because Eden and Genesis. Is a book of origins. It will say the woman. It didn't say a woman. Let me explain what that Eden was. Eden was a place where the spirit, you know now because of the fall, because we no longer have the divine life. And in fact, right now, we are even lower than the angels. We are lower than the angels. The Bible says God made him a little lower than the angels. It was, it's for his season though. Because it's not, God didn't make us originally to be lower than the angels. So even when Jesus Christ came, if you read Hebrews chapter 2, the Bible says Jesus was made a little lower than the angels for a season. But we see him now glorified. And what happened to Jesus will also happen to us. So the devil saw that, mm, okay, these are the people that are supposed to occupy this throne that they don't want me to occupy. Let us see the road that they used to occupy it. So he now went to deceive the woman. And she was deceived. But it is instructive to know that Adam was not deceived. Because there is something about the woman that makes her to be easily, more easily deceived than the man. And that thing even still endures till now. That is why fast forward thousands of years when Apostle Paul was giving instructions concerning leadership in the church. He gave a very meticulous criteria for before women can enter into leadership in the church. Women don't enter into leadership in the church by default. He says, but she shall be saved by childbearing if she continues in righteousness, in humility and sobriety. What he was basically saying is that 
A woman that has not gone through a process of maturing. And one of the signs that you are mature, spiritual, you are, for example, physically, one of the signs that you are mature is that you give birth. You are able to reproduce. You know that's one of the signs of maturity. A child does not have the ability to reproduce. One of the signs, now, one of the signs that a woman is qualified is that there must be a meticulous process seen that she has passed through the process of childbearing. Now, there's a spiritual dimension to that and, I will, and I, this is my opinion that there's also a physical, because even physically and emotionally speaking, when women have children, they become more mature. But that is not our topic. But it's just a bonus. Just throw in the bonus there for no extra charge. Amen? Amen. So, it's not saying that women cannot occupy leadership in the church. But it's just that in order for a woman to occupy leadership in the church, she must pass through that process. There must be a, she must have a track record. Do you understand what I'm saying? She must, have, she must have a track record and demonstrated maturity beyond reasonable doubt. Beyond reasonable doubt. Where you find people that gave their life to Jesus Christ three months, how many months ago, like the Dickens, uh, Philip and Co., that gave their life to Jesus Christ how many months ago, they already put them into leadership. They will not put women into leadership then. You more. Uh, you understand what I'm saying? Before you be qualified to begin to take authority, you must have gone through a meticulous process that, de- that would birth maturity in you. So that when the devil appears to you as an angel of light, you will know that, no, this one is the devil. Because if you, the devil can deceive the leader of a Christian community, that Christian community will be easily led astray. And if the leader is somebody that can be easily deceived, it is very dangerous. That's why Apostle Paul gave those things. It's not because Apostle Paul had an aversion towards women. I want you to let me monitor the, this thing so that the battery will not run out because it's not plugged in. It's not plugged in because of the noise. Amen. Amen. So, I also mentioned that there were some angels that the Bible says in the book of Jude. What's the power level? First. There are some angels that did not keep their estate. And because of that, they have been reserved in everlasting punishment. Those ones are already inside torment. The devil is not yet in that torment. That's why the devil is still roaming around. We know it is in the book of Revelation that we see that the devil... I'm now talking fast again. It is in the book of Revelation that we see that the devil was tied and put in a bottomless pit. And it was later we saw that the devil was cast into the lake of fire after the millennial reign of Christ. You know, there's a millennial reign of Christ that will be on this earth. Are you aware? Now, the devil try, said, okay, these people are not going to be able to... This throne, so they will now be the rulers of all of creation. This throne that we wanted to occupy. And so the devil came in through... The Bible says the serpent was more subtle than all the other animals that the Lord has created. And the serpent said... Has God said you should not eat of all the food? What kind of question is that? If not of evil, what? Did God say you should not eat of all the fruits of the tree in the garden? If to thou said, eh, God, God said we should not eat of the fruits in the middle of the garden. That if we touch it or we eat it, we will surely die. And you know the way the story played out. Now, when God showed up, the Lord God showed up. Who is the Lord God that showed up? That's pre-incarnate Jesus. When he showed up in the scene, after man had fallen, because God actually told them that the day you eat of this tree, you will surely die. And what happened, the reason why right now, we are, there is a serious chasm. There's a serious dichotomy. There's a, there's a serious difference between the spirit realm and the physical realm. For us as human beings, it's because of that death. Because of that death. The way God created man, man had a body, but it was not this kind of body that you have now. It was that death because the, God created man. Look at this light bulb now. You see this light bulb? The usefulness and the reason why this light bulb is useful is because of the electricity that is flowing through it. The life of this light bulb is the electricity. Take away the electricity and it is useless. It is still there. You can see probably use it for something. You can probably turn it into a bowl. I don't know. You know, but it is useless. That's what 
happen to man? The life that animated man. You know, just like this light bulb now. You know there's a way this light will be bright. That you will not be able to see the nakedness of this bulb. You know what I mean? You will not be able to see the body of the bulb. But if the light is a very, very brilliant and intelligent light, like let's, let's say it's a light that has, there's a computer chip that is controlling the different colors of the light. It is anything that the light wants you to see that you will see. Just like when your TV screen is on. And even if the screen is dirty, but if the TV is really bright, it is what the TV is showing that you will see. It is not the, the screen that you will see. That is how the glory of God was animated by the power and the life of God in man. A man did not need cloth. He was wearing a glorified body. It is whatever that glory wants you to see that you will see. And that's why when the Lord Jesus Christ resurrected with that body, you notice that there are some times that he did not want people to see him at all. He will be there and his disciples will not see him. His disciples did not recognize him. Whenever he wanted them to recognize him, they would recognize him. Even the cloth that they used to wrap his body, he, it was in the grave. They saw the cloth there. But he wasn't going around naked. And may I tell you that he didn't need cloth anymore. It's whatever he wants you to see him wearing that he will wear. Remember, how many of you watch Terminator? You watch Terminator. Remember that those Terminators, they come naked, but it is whatever. Kai, those movie makers, mad. They must have, they don't go into some kind of understanding, no. It is whatever cloth that the Terminator wants you to see it wearing that it will wear. Such is the body that man had. And man had the ability to interact with the spirit. For example, that serpent that the Bible talked about was Satan. If you read Revelation chapter 12, you say it was Satan and the devil, you know, the same person. But they. Eve was interacting with a spirit being. Are you understanding my point? The way I will be interacting with you. I heard the sound of your voice in the garden. They could see God the way you are. They could see the Lord God. Even in the spirit. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because that body makes it such that the spirit realm and the physical realm are one. You have authority and you have influence over the spirit realm when you have the glorified body and you have authority and influence over this physical realm. You know that there are many things I can influence in this physical realm. I'm seeing this thing now. I can hit it and it will fall down. Because I have influence. But as, as I am standing here now, whether you know it, for those of you, some of you know it, there are spiritual things here. But I can't see them. And I cannot do like this and a physical, spiritual thing will be displaced. That's because of the fall. So now, because of the redemptive work of God, the only way I can display spiritual things is by prayer you understand so it's, uh, it's, it's not that it's not as easy as it would have been if I didn't fall but because of the new life I know we have not received the fullness of the new life we will receive the fullness of the new life during the resurrection that's called the hope of our calling when this your body will be changed to that same glorified body that Adam lost and Jesus is the first to have that body let's read Philippians chapter 3 verse 19. Philippians chapter 3 verse 19. Philippians chapter 3 verse 19 says, whose end is destruction, who, whose God is their belly. It's talking about some believers that have refused to um, receive spiritual enlightenment. You know we are talking about spiritual enlightenment. It says whose God is their belly and whose glory is in their shame. You know, we have a glory. And I just described that glory. That glory, we are going to receive it in fullness when we receive the glorified body. It says, whose glory is in their shame. And now I tell you, even, even weeping, that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ. Now, okay, so let me read verse 20. It says, for our conversation is in heaven. Our what? Another way I can put it, a, a, my, trans, my favorite translation says our citizenship. If I were the one doing that translation, I would have probably said our reality is in heaven. It says our conversation is in heaven from whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall change our vile body. What is our vile body? This body you have now. Who shall change our vile body that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body. 
He already has that glorious body. That's why he's called the first begotten of the dead. He's the first person to resurrect with that kind of body. According to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things under himself. So, Adam and Eve, when they fell short of the glory of God, one problem I have with this, um, we need to get a sound monitor here. Amen? We need to get a sound monitor. That is so that the microphone will not just be sounding in the audio recording, but we can also hear it so that I won't be shouting. More than I'm supposed to shout. Now, one thing that Adam lost among many other things, because when there is dominion, principalities and powers become not as relevant. And principalities and powers are not necessarily bad things. Do you understand what I'm saying? The principalities and powers are not necessarily bad things. It, the Bible says all things were created, whether they be thrones, dominions, principalities, and powers. That's the way God ordered his creation. That's the organogram of creation. That's the way the Lord Jesus ordered creation. So the highest is thrones. And remember, if you, I showed us some studies ago that what we are going to inherit, read Revelation chapter 20, is thrones. Thrones. Adam did not inherit throne, but God already started giving him dominion. He had not even really started fully occupying the dominion before he fell. So when you find someone that has, I know dominion is still higher than principalities and powers. It's just like if the president comes here now. You know that as, no, as long as the president is here, eh, the, lo the local government chairman is not so significant. The president can come and just say, um, We'll do a road here. We'll do a road here. Eh? Is yes, sir. Period. And, if, and you know, the president is not actually as powerful as a king that has a throne. Because the president does not have a throne. In fact, the president's power is divided in the, the, the throne of this country is divided into three. The judiciary occupies one third of it. The legislators occupy one third of it. And the executive occupy one third of it. Actually, the most powerful of them, of the three, is what? Let me see how much government we know here. Of the three stairs of government, which is the most powerful? is the legislators. It's not the judiciary. The reason why it's the legislators is that they are the only ones that have the power to impeach. I hope you know that legislators can actually impeach judges and they can impeach presidents. Judiciary cannot just sit down and remove a president. You know, you know right? Except when there is a contested election, and it's not as if they, but the legislators can just wake up. If you can go and bribe all the legislators in your state now, they can just wake up in the morning and say, today we are removing the governor and they will succeed. And they say, today we are removing the judge and they will succeed. I know that there's, the exec executive cannot spend one couple without the approval of the legislators in under normal circumstances. But when it is a king, all of that is vested in the throne. So whenever there is a throne, Every other principality, his job is just to execute the decrees of the throne. Whether he likes it or not. Praise the Lord. And so, even though Adam had not had throne, God already gave him dominion. So the devil probably already, being a very smart creature, already knew. So the devil was going to do everything to ensure that he couldn't occupy that throne. And so what did the devil do? The devil um, the devil caused man to fall. And after man fell, it looks as if, yes, this agenda of throne, this throne will still be vacant, say. And then he now saw that God already had a program to redeem man from the fall. And what was the program? You know, God said that the seed of the woman shall bruise the head of the serpent. And all of that. And the devil understood that that meant that there was still hope for humankind. Because the devil expected that God will abandon humankind because death just meant that God could, could no longer walk through humankind. But when he still saw that God was still prophesying upon humankind, it was evident that God still had a plan for man. And then some angels went into action. About 200 of them. And what was their job? 
to defile the human race and make it such that the human race is irredeemable. And what was their game plan? You know, angels already have... In, I hope you know angels have bodies. You know that, right? Angels have bodies. That's the reason why Hebrews say that many people have entertained angels without knowing it. But angels, because though their bodies are not... Their bodies are glorified bodies. They can manifest themselves only when they want to be manifested. An angel can come here and sit down with this place and partake in Bible study and you think he's a human being. Because he's, he's, he's manifesting his body the way you want him to see. You know, we talked about that glory thing, right? Background noise. We talked about that glory thing. So, They manifested as people and um, the Bible says that humankind became terribly corrupted. Terribly corrupted. And when humankind became terribly corrupted, it just meant that... Do you notice that by the time we got to Genesis chapter 6, the Bible says the sons of God, referring to the angelic beings, went to the daughters of men and they gave birth to children, you know, and there was a lot of violence on the earth human race was properly corrupted it got to a time that God said he was going to destroy humankind do you remember the flood of Noah but thank God for Noah that found grace in the sight of God now why did the devil do that why did those and those angels knew that they were taking a very serious risk I don't know what the devil told them but they knew they were taking a very very serious
Amen. No, 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 don't connect it. He literally molded this planet. How many percent? 19. He literally molded this planet. No, 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 don't need it. He literally molded this planet. Literally. Now, we need to fast forward. No, 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 don't need, no need. He's not doing any work. <sighs> Holy Spirit, help us in Jesus' name. Now, in order for humankind to come back to that original plan that God had, because what happened was that we, be, we became spiritually dead because of sin. Sin became our nature, and that was not God's original plan for us as human beings. God didn't make us to have a nature of sin. The fall was what made us to have a nature of sin. But in order for us to be those that we partake in God's kingdom, we had to be free of this nature of sin. Now, you know that as a human being, you have three compartments. You have three parts. You have a spirit, you have a soul, and you have a body. But what happens to fallen man is that both his spirit, his soul, and his body has been properly defiled. So in order for God to save man, God had to save man through and through, both from the spirit realm and save him with his soul and also save his body. Now, how does God save the spirit? Now, I'm talking about, the, remember that God's plan. Amen? Amen? First and foremost, you need to realize that God did not create the hell, he didn't create hellfire for human beings. He created hellfire for the devil and for his angels. Now, because the devil is, is he, he cannot die, he's immortal. And angels are immortal. God needed to create a place where he can lock them up and keep them away from the rest of his creation. Since they are rebellious beings. Are you understanding my point? And that was why hellfire, the lake of fire, was created. It's a place where they were supposed to be locked out of God's eternity forever and ever so that they will no longer defile eternity because they themselves have been defiled. The reason why human beings go to hell is because human beings have decided to join the devil's political party and have been decided to have for all purposes and intent, taking on a satanic nature. So, when you see a human being lying, lying is not the nature of God. God does not lie. God cannot lie. Jesus Christ was talking to some people. He said, you are of your father the devil, for he was a liar from the beginning. Now, you notice that nobody has to teach any human being how to lie. From when we were children, lying comes to us naturally. It is a satanic nature that we got because of the fall. And it is because of that nature that people go to hell. But the point I am making is that what Jesus came to do, amen? Amen. <laughs> amen. amen. I'm trying to draw the map. I'm trying to draw the map of creation so that we will know where we are. We are not yet at the end yet, but we are somewhere. And so that we will understand why Jesus is doing all. If you understand the reason why God is doing what he's doing, it will be difficult, it will be easy for you to participate in God's agenda. So, God made man in his image and in his likeness. We saw that. Man fell. And in order for God to redeem man, the Lord Jesus had to come. Because there was no sacrifice that was going to be sufficient to atone for the sins of man. Now, basically what sin does is that sin takes away life. The wages of sin is death. In order for there to be a restoration of life, you have to take the life from one and give it to the other. Unfortunately, there was no human being who had life that we could take and say, let your life be the replacement of the life that humankind has lost. Because everybody was born into that sinful nature. And so we're all born spiritually dead. Amen? Now, Jesus Christ came to be that sacrifice. He came to give us his life as the ransom. Now, the reason why he could do that is because remember that he is also God. When the Bible says God gave his only begotten son, that's not a joke. Jesus is the only begotten of the Father. God does not have any other because God is one. The Bible says here, who is Israel, for the Lord thy God is one God. He is the, in him lies the fullness of the Godhead body. Let me explain. If God was ever going to manifest in flesh, because God is one, he could only manifest once. So Jesus is the only begotten of the Father. 
It means that he is the only man, he's the only version of God in this realm of creation that there is. And God was willing to give that version of himself for the redemption of man. You don't know how much God loves us. But it is his nature. God is love. So he was willing to give the own. Do you understand what I'm saying? Let me, how do I express this? Okay, but we don't have time. So I have to just keep that point. The Lord will give us understanding in Jesus' name. So when the Bible keeps talking about how Jesus is the only begotten son of God, it's not a joke. Because God is one. If God is going to manifest in this realm, he only has one version that can manifest in this realm. Jesus is not a copy of God. God the son, the word of God, the second person of the Godhead had to literally leave heaven and come and tabernacle in us. That is, there was no God the son in heaven when Jesus was on the earth. But that is not our study. One day I pray the Holy Spirit will give us liberty to do a study on that. The son of God. Now, in order for humankind to be redeemed, that sacrifice needed to be made, but it needed to be made by a human being that is a pure species. And every other human being had been seriously corrupted. And the only way that God could find that pure species was him. The only version of him that, was re- that existed, that created man in his image. So he now re-entered his creation and came in now as flesh and blood. Now, all of what I'm saying is very complex. And because of time, I can't explain it. So I'm just going to have to skip it. Now, remember I said that God did not create heaven, hell for man. He created hell for the devil. The reason why human beings are going to hell is because human beings now have a satanic nature and we are now operating in the nature and in the behavior and in the rebellion of the devil. So because God created hell to shut out rebellion from the rest of his creation, he had to also put human beings there. That's the reason why people go to hell. Now, anyone that accepts the Lord Jesus Christ and believes in Jesus Christ, something happens to his spirit. Believing in Jesus Christ means that Jesus, you surrender and bring yourself now under the authority and the government of Jesus. Because whether you knew it or not, as long as you were born into this world because of the fall, you were under the government of the devil. The devil was your Lord. The devil was your Lord. So in order for you to come out of the lordship of the devil and be delivered from the nature of the devil, because it is the person that is your lord that you exhibit his nature. You need to accept Jesus Christ. That's why the Bible says that we are delivered out of the kingdom of darkness and brought into the kingdom of his son, the kingdom of light. So believing in Jesus Christ means accepting him as your lord and your savior. It means surrendering to him as your lord. But remember that salvation is not primarily just to help you escape hell. Salvation is to bring you back into God's program and help you to grow into maturity so that what Adam could not attain, you will attain it in Christ because of maturity, which is thrones. Which is thrones. Are you following all of this study? The Lord will give us understanding in Jesus' name. Now, now that Jesus has come and he has died for our sins and many of us have accepted Jesus as our Lord and Savior, we have been given the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the one that administers the Lordship of Jesus to us. There are many things that you may want to do. Now, the Bible is, was inspired by the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. And we live according to the word of God. Apart from the Bible that rules our lives and that puts us in line with the nature of Christ so that we will ultimately appropriate and activate our thrones and all of of what Christ has paid for us. Amen? We also have the indwelling Holy Spirit. The indwelling Holy Spirit. The indwelling Holy Spirit is the one That's why you discover that the Bible says that no one can say that Jesus is Lord except by the Spirit of God. Because remember I said that the Holy Spirit is the one that activates, is the one, he he establishes the Lordship of Christ in your life. 
Now, if you confess, say Jesus is Lord, but you are not doing his will, you are not really living under the lordship of Jesus. Jesus Christ said, many, it's not they that say, Lord, Lord, that we enter the kingdom of heaven, but they that do the will of my Father in heaven. Because it's not just by saying, Lord, Lord. What the Holy Spirit does is that the Holy Spirit helps us to understand the word of God which is inspired. The word of God is the hard copy. The soft copy is the work of the Holy Spirit in your heart. How many? Connect it. This won't go off. Don't worry, we'll soon get a better laptop. In Jesus' name. So, the Holy Spirit actually makes the reality of God our experience. That's the reason why when if the person is spirit-filled, there are many sins that if he wants to commit, eh, he will know that something within him is not allowing it. That is the Holy Spirit. And just that you accepted Jesus as your Lord, the Bible says that you have the spirit of sonship. And that you are baptized in the Holy Spirit means that you are filled with the Spirit. That means you don't just have knowings and nudgings. You can actually commune with God through the Holy Spirit. That is what God is doing. So, this life that we have on this earth is actually very, very temporal. But while we are in this life on this earth, what, we are, what life on earth is doing to us and for us is that it is helping us to demonstrate love for God and commitment to God. It is helping us to choose God because our faithfulness and our demonstration of love for God is what will determine our participation and our inheritance of his kingdom. Remember I talked about how that there was a trial for the angels and a third of them fell. Because what, the third of them that fell are those that chose, they didn't choose God. They chose themselves. They didn't follow, they didn't love God. They loved themselves. You know there's a very popular doctrine going around that love yourself, love yourself, love yourself. I hope you know that that's, a, that's not the doctrine of, that's the doctrine of devils. Oh, you didn't know. They say, the Bible says love your neighbor as yourself. That is just a very, very unfortunate twisting of words. Jesus Christ said that if anyone will be my disciple, he must hate his life. Have you seen that in the Bible? You've not seen it in the Bible. He said he must hate it. Jesus, <laughs> you don't need to preach self-love to a human being. We naturally love ourselves. What you need to preach is self-denial. The power of godliness is selflessness. Do you remember that Jesus Christ, he didn't think of... Or, he sacrificed his life for a ransom for your sins. Amen? And as you walk with God, what God will do in you is that he will establish in you the operating system of godliness. Where you will be willing to deny yourself. He said, Jesus said, if anyone will follow me, he must deny himself daily. Take up his cross and follow me. May God help us in Jesus' name. Remember I said that, I said by talking about how that it is more blessed to give than to receive. It is that same principle of selflessness. You see, that is the way to walk in the blessedness of God's kingdom. Where you become unstoppable, the prince of this world will find nothing. Tell your neighbor nothing in you. So I just, I had started drawing a graph for the map. So the reason why God is trying to redeem man is because God wants a... Now, one of the reasons why God created man is because when God created the Lord Jesus, I heard this and I just loved it. You know, Jesus was the first and he was the son of God. He's always been the, he's the eternal son of God. You know, into this realm, God, God coming into this realm came as the son of God. And someone said God loved Jesus so much and he wanted Jesus to have a family. He wanted Jesus to have brothers and sisters. And he also wanted a family and we are that family. Amen? It's the way God loves Jesus, God also wants to love you. Amen? And as you choose God, as you choose God, you will find the love of God. That's why it says the, the, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Ghost be with you. So at this work is a work of love. One of the things that you will realize as you grow in this work and as you are receiving spiritual enlightenment is that you will know the love of God. You will know that God loves you. 
you will know beyond when Paul got to a point, he said, Nothing can separate us from the love of God. He said, Trials, he said, Not even angels can separate us. The love that God has for you, but you have to keep choosing God. You have to keep choosing God so that you can walk in His love. Because if you don't walk in, if you don't walk, walk under the authority of Christ, you cannot walk in the love of God and you cannot know the love of God. I've said a lot of things to you and I've still not been able to hit it on the point because there is so much to be said. One hour, 30 minutes is not just enough for these teachings. But that's all we've got. And so we have to make the most of our world. Move that thing. So that these people that are following, we, we hear something clean small. Amen? We have to, we have to, we have to know that Jesus Christ came to redeem us back to God. And as we grow, now let me just say this in closing, and this is a very important point. Jesus Christ said, if you love me, you will obey my commandments. The commandments of Jesus are not just the thou shalt not and thou shalt you find in the Bible. God has an instruction for you. It has been written concerning you in the book before you were born, what you will do. That is also the commandment of God concerning your life. The reason why I'm standing here doing what I'm doing right now is because it is a commandment of the Lord. And I am doing this in obedience to his commandment. That's the reason why I will do this no matter how in, except he tells me to stop. I will not stop. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen? Now, do you even know what God wants you to do with your life? What is the kingdom assignment, purpose? Because you will be rewarded according to your faithfulness to that purpose. Remember the parable of the talents. Remember the parable of the minas. If you do not fulfill purpose, you have lost out of a lot. I do not even think that you will be able to inherit a throne if you don't fulfill purpose. I don't think you'll be able to inherit a throne if you don't fulfill purpose. And that's why people that envy, people that give Jesus their lives to Jesus on their deathbed should actually pity such people. Some people envy the thief on the cross. This time that we have is an opportunity for us to fulfill purpose. Do you remember that Jesus Christ, even Jesus our Lord, the only begotten Son of God, he was exalted to his throne after he fulfilled his purpose? Do you think he would have received that exaltation? Because you know what happened with Jesus was that he became flesh and flesh and blood became glorified again. That is he end that throne even as a man. And the point he was making is that you too you can end that throne if you follow him. Now, I use the word end very carefully. 